Hello guys and welcome to this video about approach to septic arthritis in emergency settings. So I will start by giving you a definition. So septic arthritis is joint infection by microorganisms and it's most, most, uh, affect, uh, mostly affect children less than three years old. And bacteria are the most significant pathogen because of their rapidly destructive nature. And septic arthritis is described as non-gonococcal and gonococcal bacterial septic arthritis. The non-gonococcal uh, is usually very aggressive and it is represented by the staphylococcal infection, mostly staphylococcus aureus, and the group A streptococci, uh, especially streptococcus biogenes. While the gonococcal septic arthritis is represented by the Neisseria gonorrhea and it's most common 75% uh, of cases of septic arthritis. So now I'm going to explain to you how the patients present to you uh, if they have septic arthritis. So there would be a progressive swelling of the joint and the overlying skin is warm and erythematous and single joint uh, is usually affected but sometimes more than one is involved especially in eunice and younger and younger uh, and younger children and it mostly most commonly affect joints such as the hip the knee the ankle the elbow the wrist and the shoulder and the joint is usually extremely tender and the patient is unwilling to move their joint. The joint is held in position of most comfort, usually slight flexion. Uh, uh, yeah, so there is usually slight flexion of the joint. So the, the capsule is uh, dilated as much as it could. And the onset is insidious and rapid. And the systemic symptoms like fever, weakness, and headache is usually present. So again, there's a progressive swelling, the skin is warm and erythematous, and the, sometimes it's a single joint, but other times more than, more than one joint. Yeah, and the joint is tender, and the patient is unwilling to move their joint. Now, I want you to pay attention to these details so you don't miss them. So don't overlook septic arthritis in joints that already have gout or rheumatoid arthritis because septic arthritis is possible in every joint and it is more uh, likely to occur in these joints that have gout or rheumatoid arthritis. Sometimes the patient can move their joint because they already took steroids and analgesics over the counter which mask the inability to move so you want to take good history from the patient so you don't overlook this and this is very important sometimes the sign of septic joint is masked by antibiotics that's another very important point and the IV drug abusers may have involvement of uncommon joints of the axial skeleton such as sacroiliac joints, the vertebral, and the sternoclavicular joints. Now I, want, now I want to talk about the diagnosis. So if you suspect septic arthritis in, in patient, you want to order full blood count, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, C-reactive protein, and also you want to order blood cultures, throat cultures, so you can detect bacteria or any infections that the patient have. And joint aspiration is definitive diagnosis, but sometimes it is delayed while waiting for laboratory studies. Uh, and the X-ray may be initially normal or show only soft tissue swelling with displacement of capsular fat planes, but later there is features of bone destruction. Uh, now I want to talk about 
the synovial fluid analysis. Uh, so I made this table that compare the normal synovial fluid with the septic joint synovial fluid. So for the color, the normal is transparent, while for, for the septic joint, the it is yellow. The appearance is usually clear for the normal, or always clear, while the septic joint is usually purulent and turbid. The white blood count is less than 1,000 for the normal and more than 50,000 for the septic joint. And the polymorphonuclear cells is less than 25% for the normal and more than 75% for the septic joints. And special test, so for the normal joint, there is the normal string sign. That's when you uh, aspirate some of the fluid, uh, synovial fluid from the uh, normal joint. Uh, when you drop some of it from the uh, from the needle, it actually it become like string from small droplets. Uh, but while this sign is absent in the septic joint or the septic fluid, so. And the gram stain and cultures are actually positive for the septic joints. So you may uh, pay attention to this. Uh, now, you can actually assume that the patient have septic arthritis just by uh, looking into the uh, synovial fluid. It, it, uh, it is purulent and turbid, and it is yellowish. So you can just assume the patient have septic arthritis and you want to first send a, a specimen for, uh, for analysis and you want to take the, uh, and you want to give the patient uh, IV uh, antibiotics uh, uh, directly. You don't have to wait. Uh, I, I want to introduce another, uh, another criteria here. So it helps you in diagnosis of septic arthritis, and this is the Kocher criteria. This is very interesting. So, so it is actually a four criteria, and each criteria you give one point. So, uh, so the first one is inability to weight bear the affected side. If the patient is unable to weight weight bear the affected side, you give them one point. If the erythrocytic maintenance rate is more than 40, this is also one point. The fever is more than 38.5, is also one point. And the white, white blood count is more than 12,000, is also one point. So when the patient gets one point, it is a 3% possibility that they have septic arthritis. If they get two points, it's 40%. If they get three points, it's 93%. And if they get four points, it is 99 percent this will help help you in diagnosis so you want to uh, maybe save this into your phone or try to remember it every time uh, now i want to talk about uh, how you decide if this is gonococcal septic arthritis or if it is not gonococcal septic arthritis so you want to think gonococcal if the arthritis is migratory and it is monoarticular. And if the patient is young and sexually active, and if there is a slower onset of symptoms over several days, and the patient has symptoms of genital infection, this also will help you. Uh, if you don't find a purulent synovial fluid aspirate, then you look for the tried periarthritis, tenosynovitis, and poorly arthralgia, this will help you confirm the, the diagnosis of septic arthritis uh, if, the, if, the, if the cause is going to come. Because sometimes the synovial fluid is not purulent. So you want to make sure you remember this. And there's also, there might be a rash, and this is seen in Neisseria speci species in general. So the you want to think non gonococcal septic arthritis if the aspiration of genital fluid reveal large number of white blood cells and gram stain and cultures positive. 
and the uh, sept the septic fluid is usually pure land or is always pure land if the cause is non gonococcal and this is very aggressive so you want to give antibiotics quickly you don't want to wait for the analysis of the uh, aspiration of the fluid so now for the finally for the treatment so you want to give IV antibiotics if it is a Staphylococcus species uh, it is either IV vancomycin or IV clindamycin but when the Staphylococcus infection uh, infect the prosthetic joint then you add rifampin to either one of these and if it is Neisseria gonorrhea infection you want to give IV, IV subtraction and you follow this by oral suffixin and you want to refer the patient to the orthopedic team for joint irrigation, drainage, especially if non gonococcal infection. And you give the patient analgesia and you supplant the joint. Thank you guys very much for watching. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe. It really helps me. And uh, also I have more videos to come in this series. So to, uh, make sure you follow the channel uh, and so you get updates every time.